Hey everyone, welcome back to Dev Parkour. Oof. It's been so long I can't even pronounce the name of the channel anymore. Welcome back to Dev Parkour. Um, I wanted to show you something that I have been working on uh, mostly off, but off and on uh, for the last few months. Um, and when I say mostly off, I, I really have been working on it maybe three days out of the last seven or eight months. Um, but it's something that kind of piqued my interest. So I decided to go looking into it. Uh, and it's actually one of those things where I know this is going to sound crazy for a coding channel, but I actually challenged myself to write as little code as possible. I wanted to find open source projects to do as much of the heavy lifting as I possibly could. Um, primarily because, uh, some of it can get kind of tricky. And if someone else has already done it well enough or better than I could potentially, um, let's, let's use that as much as possible. And what I'm talking about is web analytics, right? So everybody's heard of Google, Google analytics. Um, there are a lot of other tools out there like, uh, crazy egg is popular, hot jar, heap, 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 uh, mix panel. Um, I used to work for a company called quantum metric. They're, kind of in that space that so they do a lot more uh, than that. And then, then, there, then there are also some other uh, applications and tools that uh, get into more like, um, you know, error detection and uh, uh, monitoring and, and that sort of thing. Um, but we'll kind of keep it to the web analytics space, kind of like Google Analytics, uh, but you get control over it, right? So there are open source alternatives. I've seen one called uh, Plausible, I think. Uh, and another one that I found is, uh, well, Open Web Analytics. Um, but I was really drawn to one called Countly. Um, and the, the main reason for that is licensing. Um, so unfortunately, Open Web Analytics and Plausible, while both being open source, uh, and they look pretty, pretty good, pretty powerful. You could just grab them, run them uh, out of the box um, and have a full uh, web analytics platform. Um, their licensing uh, is kind of weird. So they use something called the AGPL, the Afero GPL, um, which is basically GPL, which is typically uh, not is typically GPL is that you can make modifications to the code, but if you, uh, distribute the code, uh, you know, in compiled form, you have to, you still have to make the source available, right? It's, it is completely open source, truly open source. One loophole with that is with the rise of the web. If you just make modifications to a GPL project and host it on your own web server, that's not distributing binaries of the, of the code. It, you're just giving people access. You're allowing people to use the software on your systems, which means that you don't have to uh, release the, the, the source code for your modifications. Well, the AGPL, the Afero GPL, is uh, kind of a way of patching the loophole. And basically what it says is, it's GPL plus if you allow people to use your web application, your, your modifications to this web application, you have to make the source, uh, for your modifications available. Well, I don't necessarily want to tie myself into, uh, you know, that, that realm. What if I want to make a commercial product of this, right? What if I want to make it closed source? Um, not that I'm necessarily going to, but you know, I don't want to hamstring myself right, right from the beginning. So Countly, their server is licensed. It's, it's still open source, but it, it is licensed under the AGPL. However, their little JavaScript library, basically the JavaScript snippet, uh, that gets downloaded, uh, uh, into your, uh, into the web browser that starts recording. Uh, all the stuff going on in, in the website, that is licensed MIT, which is pretty unrestricted. 
Um, so let's actually switch over to my screen and I'll show you the Git repository, the GitHub repository for the Countly uh, web SDK. And this is the source code for the, the little JavaScript snippet. Uh, there's also a little, I think, uh, let's see, SDK JS, I think is the actual source source. Also MIT licensed, uh, yeah, MIT licensed, um, where they, uh, you know, the community potentially, right, uh, makes modifications to the little JavaScript uh, snippet, um, a little JavaScript library that gets downloaded into the browser. Um, but then the, uh, the web SDK is the minified, compiled and minified version. So this is a, this is a good place to start. And what's awesome about this is that, uh, it's pretty well documented and, uh, it's a pretty good foundation to start building other things on top of. So if you want to track specific information, uh, specific events, um, it's not that tricky to extend this little JavaScript snippet, um, and then, and then bake it into your, your application, whatever, whatever you're trying to do web analytics on. Um, however, that does mean that you, you still need a server to record all this stuff. So I challenged myself again, from the very beginning, write as little code as possible. I basically wanted a little API that would take what this JavaScript snippet is sending out and basically just save it to a database. So I'm not even going to show you the code because it's, it's super simple. If you know how to write uh, any sort of API in any language, um, it's a lot easier for you to just do that than to try to figure out what I'm doing in C sharp, which is the language that I chose to do. And it would take me longer to explain what all is going on there. It's basically just take in this JSON payload and save it to the database. Um, and you can look at the JSON payload and figure out, you know, bits and pieces of information. And if you start extending it in this JavaScript uh, snippet, um, you know, then obviously you'll know the shape and you can start extracting out the things that you care about. Now, the interesting part about this is now you have data in a database that has uh, information about sessions and events and clicks, um, and you can uh, install something like Superset on top of it. Superset is pretty cool. It's an Apache project. It's licensed under the very unrestrictive Apache 2 license, a little more restrictive than MIT and BSD, but still uh, pretty flexible. You can basically do whatever you want with it. Um, I, the, le the lawyers are going to be upset with me for what I just said. You can't just do any, whatever you want with it, but it, it, is, it is pretty permissive. You can do quite a bit with it. Uh, commercial, uh, non-commercial, right, whatever. Um, anyway, enough licensing talk. I, I did another video a long time ago about all the different open source licenses. Go watch that. If I remember when I'm posting this, I'll, I'll put a link to it in the, in the description. If not, I promise you it exists. Just search the parkour licenses. Uh, I'm sure it'll show up. So Superset is pretty cool. Again, open source project. Um, and it's basically just a very general purpose uh, dashboarding and analytics reporting tool. Uh, so you have different uh, data sets, database connections. So I just added one for my analytics database. And then you can create some data sets uh, and you could go into SQL lab and say, okay, I wanna see the analytics database. Yeah, it's the analytics schema because this is uh, MySQL, so it's what we think of as a MySQL database is technically a database schema, but anyway. And then we can look at tables. And I split mine into sessions, events, metrics. That's kind of how Countly reports its stuff, so that kind of made sense. I also have my EF, Entity Framework Migration History table that shows up just because it's a table in the database. Um, and in this SQL lab, I can start running queries. So I can do like 
uh, select star from from sessions and run and then I get a bunch of stuff about the sessions right I can get where was it sessions sessions events 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 that's not right what is it session events session events and there we get you know various events right so view orientation a bunch of portrait a bunch of landscape that's cool um yeah uh and from there you can you can start doing more and more complex queries but what's really interesting is if you go into the dashboarding capability you can do stuff like this which i i haven't built that much to be fair but i can see it looks like five sessions today six i don't know what unit that is i really should figure out what unit that is um and you can add more charts so let's actually just drill into what what this particular chart is is defined as so it's basically uh binned by session start uh bin by day uh the metric is count id i actually could have just done count star that no, whatever you know um and then the filter is did it have a session start which that should be all of them but that was in there as a default so sure why not um and it's got a bunch of different uh types of charts that you could create so if you go back to charts you can say add a chart you've got big number with trend line that's what i created big number pie chart bar chart pivot table line area whatever lots of different things um and i think you can even add uh things to it if you wanted to um yeah different different types of things so like funnels uh that looks pretty cool uh lots of different options here um all charts that's literally all of them word cloud you can do a sankey sankey's popular these days um so yeah I, i'm really excited about this i'm really excited to check it out um and what this means is that i can do i can continue to be writing very little code basically i could build out this dashboard in a very drag and drop way uh to highlight the specific things that i'm interested in in learning about uh i think i have this running on one of my websites right now uh, and if i don't have the information that i'm looking for I can write just a little bit more code in my little web API that separates out uh, what Countly is giving me into, you know, sessions or go back to SQL lab, you know, events, metrics. It might be interesting to do like clicks. Uh, that would be cool. I think that actually might be a type of event um, that gets recorded as um, uh, things like page views and uh, errors, you know, if someone uh, did something that caused a stack trace to show up in the in the, the browser console, something like that, um, I can just I can just start pulling things out and saving them to individual tables and then start reporting on them. Um, so I think this is really flexible. I think what I've done here really kind of separates out the um, kind of the the pieces that you really don't want to think about uh, into just pulling in open source tools and then allows me at least to really focus in on uh what what matters what data matters to extract from uh kind of this this incoming stream of just information right and if there's something that isn't being tracked from countly well i can dive into the countly javascript and add an event handler and have it start sending that as well and and boom you know that's that's really all i have to do um so eh, I'm going to tinker with this. Uh, you know, it'll probably be another year before maybe there's an updated video about what I've done with it. Um, but realistically, this is you know, this is a great foundation uh, to start playing around with. And 
you know, if there's something that you're specifically interested in recording and tracking and reporting on, um, this is, this is just what I have here is something that would take, you know, if you, if you just sat down and focused on it, um, and weren't real concerned about like production grade and scaling and that sort of thing. And you just wanted to like get a machine up and running that did this stuff in a quick and dirty fashion, less than a day, easily less than a day. Superset has a Docker compose file. That's fantastic that you just, you know, Docker compose up and boom, you have a, you have a working superset uh, environment with a persistent database. Um, that's pretty cool that, I mean, that shortens the time to get all this set up by, you know, probably days. If I'd had to, if I had to, if I'd had to figure that out from scratch, that would have take, taken me a, a good amount of time. Um, I actually did kind of modify the, the Docker compose file and that, that took more time than it should have. Um, but if you use their stock Docker compose file, which is what actually what I recommend in hindsight, what I recommend, um, it's super quick. Um, and then from there, it's literally just setting up an API. So whatever, however long it takes you to set up an API with one endpoint that basically saves anything that comes in, in the query string, uh, directly to a database and maybe does some splitting out into like individual JSON objects. That's all the time that you'll be spending, right? So that plus, I don't know, half an hour, an hour, something like that really quick and easy. I think this is pretty cool. I hope you do too. If you like it, give a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you're not already su already subscribed. Um, I hope to do a couple other videos like this. Um, you know, because I, I I haven't stopped working on projects just because I've I've not been making videos. I've still been doing things here and there, and I want to share you know just little tidbits about. Um, maybe not in-depth tutorials or anything like that, but just kind of showing some of the things that I've been working on, uh, some of the things that I think are cool uh, in, in, the, in the world of tech and the world of software engineering. Um, so yeah, subscribe and there'll be more videos coming. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.